Well, hello and welcome to the Carolina Clavier Collection. I'm Tom Strange, and we're going to take a very quick tour through square pianos and give you an idea of where they came from and, and some of their significance. So the, the beginning of the square piano very probably originated with the, uh, the shape of the clavichord. And the clavichord was uh, one of the very earliest instruments that ever became a keyboard. We have one in front of us right here, uh, based on a drawing by Henry Arnaud of uh, 1440. So this is one of the very earliest keyboard instruments, and uh, gives you an idea of what was very popular uh, in the very early times, and then the, uh, the clavichord would continue to enlarge and expand, and the square piano would be born roughly the middle part of the 18th century. So let's just listen to a clavichord for a moment. Clavichords uh, use a tangent to touch the string. This creates a note on the string so that the, uh, the, the actual length of the string is between the tangent and the bridge. In our case, uh, because that's one of the most ineffective ways of energizing a string, clavichords are always very quiet, but they can be very expressive. They can play both loud and soft, and they can even do what's known as bebung, where as you press a little harder, you can actually make a vibrato in the string. So uh, from this little Arnaud clavichord, we can hear As you can see, the clavichord is actually rectangular shaped, and so our square pianos are never square. They're actually going to be sort of rectangular shaped. They, the Germans called them Toffel Clavier or table piano, and I think table piano is a little bit more descriptive term for the shape of one of these instruments. So next we'll go to one of the very early square pianos and let you see where things got started. That little piece is the opening movement of the, uh, the second movement, or the opening of the second movement, uh, by James Hook, uh, who was writing uh, for the piano at a very early point, in fact, in the 1770s. So this little piano is uh, Frederick Beck, 1777, made very late in the year. The name board actually says 1778 because it was probably lettered just a few days into that uh, January of 78. Um, Johann Zumpy invented the square piano on or about 1766. Zumpy was a very well-connected individual. Uh, he knew Johann Christian Bach as a friend and business partner. Johann Christian Bach was the music master for Queen Charlotte. So uh, he connected Queen Charlotte and Zumpy together. And one of the first uh, uh, square pianos that Zumpy ever made went to Queen Charlotte. She was very happy with the piano and, uh, and, and you know, spoke highly of it. Uh, her ladies-in-waiting all wanted one, the aristocracy then all wanted one, and suddenly the demand for square pianos was far greater than what Zumpy could ever hope to achieve. And so he called on his friends, uh, Johannes Polman and Fred Beck here. Fred had been making uh, furniture in London, and he switched to making these square pianos and never went back on or about 1773. And so this little piano uh, is actually a, a replica in its own way of the very first pianos uh, and, uh, and is disposed in that sort of uh, very early manner. So we have very light hammers, uh, a very, very small soundboard, uh, over dampers, and then uh, a few uh, interesting arrangements on the side. So the dampers that we normally would control with our feet are actually hand levers on the side, and we can bring those up and go from a, a, a sort of a, a very dry sound to a much more fluid sound. We can also bring in the lute stop or buff stop.
which gave it a kind of a plucked sound, as though someone were playing on a lute or a guitar. These were extremely popular uh, and would sell uh, very, very well to the point where it got uh, the attention of both uh, Jacob Kirkman and uh, Burkett Schutte and later John Broadwood. And so John Broadwood would bring out a square piano in 1780 and continue to make pianos. And we're going to see a Broadwood piano in just a moment. Uh, before that, uh, another person had joined the makers in London, and his name was John Guy. He'd come from, from Germany, uh, trying to escape the hard times from the Seven Years' War, and uh, made his fortune in London building square pianos. And we have one from 1785 that we'd like to show you for just a moment. And so here we have a piano built for the musical sales firm of Longman and Broderick, uh, Longman and Broderick was the largest musical sale seller uh, in the 18th century in London, and uh, for that matter, in the world. And this piano was actually built by John Guybe, John Guybe Sr. in this case. Uh, uh, John was still a relatively young man, uh, had only just gotten married in 1779, and uh, his uh, young children were, were uh, still quite small at the time that he built this one. And so he probably would have had a shop with uh, two or three other journeyman builders and perhaps a, a few apprentices at the time. Um, John would go on to actually expand his musical building uh, business on Tottenham Court Road to the point where he became one of the largest builders in London. Uh, he uh, would advertise that he had sold over 3,000 square pianos, built and, and sold through Longman and Broderick over 3,000 square pianos in London before he would come to America. So John came to America in 1797. Uh, the children all joined him, of course, in the business. And uh, the youngest child, the youngest son, uh, William Guybe, would go on to be the builder of the piano that we're hearing uh, Patrick Hawkins play.